Hi guys, I'm back again today with another reaction video. Today we're checking out why Indonesia is always erupting. Yeah, I've heard a lot of eruption news from Indonesia and I wonder. So this is going to be um, an intriguing one to clue us into why. But before we do start, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Click that bell button to get notified whenever I do upload a video. So guys, let's check this out. These are all of the volcanoes in the world. You've got this big strip here in Ethiopia, oh. a big cluster up in Iceland, and a long strip down the west coast of the Americas. But there's one spot that has more volcanoes than anywhere else on Earth, right here in Indonesia. And it's not even all of Indonesia, this country of 17,000 islands. Oh. It's really this belt right here. This is called the Sunda Arc. And it's where the majority of volcanic activity in Indonesia is happening. Oh it's where the violence, gosh. the intensity, the... Wow. How do you even, like, how? Because my mind is over, it's always overthinking. It's, over, it's thinking more than it should, than more than I want to, but it's very active, my brain, right? So if I was living there i would definitely be paranoid as fudge like i'm always so freaking paranoid about everything i try to obviously hide it but it kills me inside especially late at night so this i cannot but i really want to go to indonesia of course beauty of all of these blasts is taking place. I want to show you some of the most striking volcanoes on Earth. And I'm doing this because I want to try to better understand why they are so deadly and why millions of people live right in the shadow of these sleeping dragons. Yeah. Oh, we have an ad. I should have been talking during the ad then. Okay, let's quickly go over why volcanoes exist. Maybe you've heard this before, but I'm gonna to try to explain it in a way that makes sense. It's important to remember that the ground under your feet is actually a giant plate, mm. 100 kilometers thick. One of many plates floating around on molten lava. They're all moving in certain directions and at different speeds. So there are seven main plates on Earth and a bunch of smaller ones, and they're always moving. When these plates move into each other, they make mountains. When they spread apart, they make underwater volcanoes that cool and turn into rocks, and we call them islands. When they slide against each other, they make terrible earthquakes. And when they run into each other and one gets forced below the other, they make volcanoes. Whoa. A whole series of volcanoes begins to pop up along the world is the edge of the so continent fascinating. parallel to the trench. So the real reason why this one strip of land in Indonesia has so many volcanoes is because this plate is slamming into this plate at a rate of seven centimeters a year, which is oh. one of the fastest movements of plates in the world. So you're getting a ton of this, which results in a ton of this. If you zoom into one of these volcanoes, you're gonna see a lot of this dark green around the volcano where no one lives. Uh -huh. But all of this, each one of these little dots are villages where tons of people live and they're right in the strike zone of Why? this volcano. Volcanoes kill people when they suddenly erupt, but it's not the lava that kills them, it's the ash. Yeah. This huge column of ash and gases first goes up and then it eventually falls down. As it falls, it gains momentum on these. If you live there, you need a gas mask, like to be honest. Deep I don't know if it will help. And eventually, but... that will slam into villages up to three kilometers in radius from the volcano. If you are standing in the way of one of these massive ash avalanches, you will die. And then if it rains, it gets really bad because the ash and the rain make these horrifying mud rivers that cut through the mountain and flood villages all around the region. Okay, this before we go any crazy. further, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a free daily newsletter, Monday oh, through Sunday. Coffee. I love Morning Brew <laughs> because it is a great way to start your day. I used to start my mornings knowing what I should be letter that happening in the world. So it made a nice, solid, is a free thank you, channel, Brew, but more informed about channel, today's Johnny news. Harris. It's own personality. And I want to... 
and let's get back to volcanoes. Every volcano has its own personality, and I wanna show you some of the most striking volcanoes along this strip, and in the process, explain how and why humans live so close to these sleeping dragons. First, let's talk about Kawa Ijen. This volcano blew up really bad 3,000 years ago and left a one kilometer wide crater that is now full of this bright blue, very acidic water. It's the most acidic lake on Earth because Whoa. under the surface, there is a huge deposit of sulfuric gas that is venting out of this crack in the Earth. All of this sulfuric gas means that when this thing erupts with lava, it burns that gas and ignites it in this mesmerizing blue flame. Whoa. All of this this gas also means that there is some money to be made. The locals have installed these ceramic pipes oh, okay. to catch the gases and force it to condense into a liquid. It flows down here to where it cools and turns into a solid, which can be harvested by locals. My friend Christian is there right now, covering the realities of this job. I'm gonna let him show you what this work is actually like. Hey Johnny, so right now we are inside of Kawa oh, Ijen, a active volcano, and this crater is That's full enough. of life. You can see all the steam rising off of the water, this insane plume of yellow smoke, and this yellow smoke is what creates the it's sulfur. So and with me here are the badass, hardworking dudes. No other way to put it, they're literal superheroes. This here is Supano. What's up, Supano? I've had this amazing opportunity to just pick his brain, try to understand a little bit better why is it that these guys have taken on some of the most challenging work conditions on planet Earth. Yeah. What is the heaviest weight that you'll take up the hill? Uh, 75 kilograms. 75 kilograms. Woo! I just tried 40 could barely manage it. I mean, you look at these guys, they're not bodybuilders, no, but they're strong-minded, they're incredibly driven, and they've got a good purpose for it. How much money for one kilo only? And even bodybuilders don't climb mountains with your weights, they're just stagnant, they're just lifting on stag like a, a flat surface, right? So, at the gym. But these guys are literally climbing rocks, so, that is crazy. 1,250. So how much do you make at the end of the day? Okay. 300,000. If you were to convert that to US dollars, okay. that's about 22, 21 dollars for the entire day's worth of work. Oh, they need more. These and th those sofas are going into this cosmetic uh, places, like, you know, the soap. The sulfur soaps are very, like, popular. Uh, they're for med medicated medication like ointments also so and those are expensive so they need to be paid more make it into town where they sell this sulfur to factories which mainly use it to bleach sugar so that it's white oh, it's backbreaking dangerous work christian made a whole video from this mine and the realities of this war i will link to that in the description next up we have mount merapi or fire mountain this Marapi. volcano has killed more humans than any other. It erupts all of the time, like every few years. Oh. Here it is erupting just last year. This thing is happening over the course of five minutes. This oh. time lapse was recorded by Volcano UT and Frecom, two different YouTube channels that I'll link to in the description. The reason why this volcano is so deadly is because, like I said before, there are millions of people living around it, and not just oh. remotely around it, like right up against the mountain. Here's the volcano, and these are all the villages right up against it. Which raises an important question yeah. I had going into this story, which is, why do so many people live here? Like, so many people. The answer is that this is an amazing place to live. I mean, with the sights, Indonesia yes. has mild, warm weather. But it rains super hard for a few months, and that rain is effectively stored in these mountains. And it mm -hmm. provides water to these people throughout the year. And then there's the fact that this is perfect fertilizer all mashed up and broken oh. down, ready to make this soil incredibly fertile. This is some of the most fertile land on earth. Oh, you get wow. three rice harvests from this soil every year because the soil is like magic. So yeah, the people living here are sort of in a high risk, high reward situation. Oh. They live on a sleeping dragon that could wipe them out at any moment. And yet, as long as it doesn't, they have some of the best weather and growing conditions on earth. Oh wow. Next up is Krakatoa. 
What you're looking at here is actually like a graveyard of what used to be a big island. It used to look a lot more like this, but a hundred years ago, it blew up. We think this is the most explosive volcano in modern history. 10% of the world could hear the blast. It was so intense. Tens of thousands were killed in the ash. And the ash exploded so high into the air that all the way in Europe, the sky was red and hazy, which has led some to speculate that it was this event that inspired the red, hazy look of this painting, one of the most famous paintings in the world called The Scream. Oh, interesting. Did it happen at the same time? Talk about all this. Oops, let's go back a bit. In the world called The Scream. The volcano that grew out of Krakatoa has kept erupting over the years, breaking oh. this island down further and further until the whole thing just eventually collapsed oh. and caused a huge tsunami oh. that killed hundreds just oh a couple of years ago. My. The island went from looking like this to this. And today, oh. it's one of the fastest growing volcanoes in the world and will certainly be back from How more destruction. How did they get the footage of that image that we just saw? Interesting. What the? Was it live? Maybe it was live and then that's why we, we have the footage because it would have drowned somewhere, washed away. I don't know where it would have been, but they have footage, so... Okay, the last one I want to talk about is this set of volcanoes. This one is Mount Bromo, and this one Bromo. is Mount Semeru. First off, these two volcanoes are some of the most stunning volcanoes I've ever seen in my life. But they also represent the deep religious symbolism that volcanoes have come to symbolize over time. This mountain, Mount Semeru, is named after the mythical Mount Meru, which is a sacred five-peaked mountain in the cosmology of three religions, Hindu, Jain, and Buddhism. It is considered to be the center of the physical and metaphysical and spiritual universes. The neighboring volcano is also deeply symbolic. It's called Bromo, which in Javanese is the name for Brahma, or the Hindu Aww. god of creation. Every year, Hindus hike up this mountain and make an offering of vegetables and plants and animals to the gods embodied in this volcano. That looks scary to climb up. There are so many more volcanoes in Indonesia and my goal is to go to Indonesia with my camera and actually photograph them Aww. for myself. A lot of the footage from this video came from Christian, who gave me a lot of his footage. He lives in Aww. Indonesia and from other places. I didn't go there, but I really want to. I'm now deeply fascinated with volcanoes because I've been deeply diving into plate tectonics. So I hope you understand more about why volcanoes exist, why so many exist in Indonesia, and how the people cope living next to these ticking time bombs. What's so intriguing to me is that the volcano is a giver. It gives abundance and fertility most of the time. But sometimes it, takes. it chooses to take away. You have to give and take, you know? Okay. In That's life. It. Oh, nope. that was a very emotional ending. I mean, it was beautiful, of course, with a lot of tragedy uh, as well. And I really want to see Los LeBlanc's um, version, living in a smoke and fire life inside a volcano. I think that's his video. And I love the way that he explained this, uh, Johnny Harris, because it was very, how do you, like he's explained it to people like me that would have never known how to explain a volcano if I read it myself, right? But anyways, interesting in indonesia is very fascinating um as a country like when we were reacting to geography of indonesia i saw how in the world it's placed in the you know in the volcano volcano it's lined up with volcano and also it's in the if i'm not correct if i'm not mistaken also like the earthquake earthquake prone country i don't even know what i'm talking about at this point but let me know what you guys thought if you like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't to i'll see you in the next video bye <laughs>